Welcome to Ask Cadence, everybody. Uh, I am Pete Wright, and I am sitting here around the usual uh, Cadence Roundtable here with Connie Plowman, Cadence COO. Hello, Connie. Hello, Pete. It's always a pleasure. Absolute pleasure. And uh, Rob Bremer, Global Courseware Manager Rob Bremer. Good morning, Pete. Good to see you. It is great to see you as well. It's been too long. It has too been too long. long. We have a special guest today. I'm very excited about our special guest. Uh, we, we have a series of topics over the next couple of weeks that we're going to be talking about regarding uh, training and development, the need for training and development. So we brought in a special guest uh, to join us for this conversation. His name's Sean Harry. Sean, Dr. Sean Harry, handing me a business card here. Uh, director of training. You have so many business cards, I don't quite know what to do. <laughs> How are you, Sean? I'm great, Peter. How are you? I'm doing very well. You, you are a, a man of many talents, clearly. For your organization is Oregon Career Management Solutions. Yes. And you are the Director of Training and Talent Development. That's correct. Uh, you are also the VP of Finance for the uh, uh, Cascadia chapter of the American Society of Training and Development. Right, that's a volunteer position. Okay, so uh, uh, tell me just in, in uh, brief strokes here, what do you do? Well, I help people figure out what they want to be when they grow up, and then I help them develop a plan to get there. That's pretty simple, that's what we do. Yeah, that's pretty simple. Career, <laughs> uh, that's, career that's Management Solutions, do. we help people find the perfect career position for this time in their life. Oh, excellent. Yeah. So you hit people uh, in, in many stages of transition uh, throughout exactly. their careers. Yes. Yep. What, what's, uh, tell us just very quickly about, about the market right now in terms of career development. Are, are people still, uh, you know, do you find them uh, uh, still going to work, uh, uh, you know, maybe changing careers once or twice? What, what's... Well, what, what we've found, uh, the studies indicate that people are changing careers in three to five year cycles these days. So very few people are staying in their career 10, 15, 20 years like my grandfather or my father did. Most people will have uh, multiple careers in their life and they will change them every three, four, five years. So the key to, for us is to help people figure out where they are at this time in their life so that they can find the perfect career that fits them at this stage of their life. I, I find that particularly germane to this, to this topic that we're, we're talking about today. We've gotten a number of questions here at Ask Cadence Global Headquarters uh, about the value of training in a volatile market. And the questions range from, from issues around, you know, what, uh, you know, what do I do when my company has canceled, uh, you know, 90% of our HR training and, and constrained training budgets? How do I, you know, do, what is my role in figuring out how to sharpen my own skills? Is it an excuse just, you know, if my company doesn't believe in training, does that mean I shouldn't believe in training and just go about my job? You know, what is the role of training? And so I thought this week we could talk together about the value of training in a volatile market and some suggestions for folks who are affected by this issue and how they might uh, how they might move forward to continue to develop their own skills and deliver results. So where do we begin? Connie, you said you had some moments of brilliance and I'd like to capture those before. Oh, they're gone now, Pete. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just thinking about what Sean said about your career and think of your career as a project plan. Put together your roadmap of what skills you want to develop, where do you want to go, and what you need to do to prepare yourself for the future. In a volatile market like we're in today, we can't just sit around and wait. We've got to take care of ourselves. The only person that's going to invest in yourself is you. And therefore, take the time to put together a plan, a project plan, to get yourself for the future and preparing yourself for change. And that's what project management is all about, is how you handle change. And mm -hmm. so now we're looking at our own change in the workplace. And I think it's a pretty cool approach. What do you think, Sean? Well, it, it, no, you're right. You're exactly right on target. It used to be that your company would help you manage your career up through the stages. And unless you work for government or very few organizations today, uh, you have to take charge of that. And you have to continuously be sharpening your own skill set and looking at what is it that I want to do in my next career position. And it's, it's kind of a balance because you don't want to be looking at your next career position while you're doing getting paid to do the work that your boss wants you needs you to do now or your corporation needs you to do now. But by the same token, you do kind of need to look into the future. So take on projects that relate to the career path where you're headed. Um, learn new skills that relate to that career path where you're headed. It's critical. 
thinking about what you guys are talking about, I, I think that an organization uh, can address this as well as an individual, that uh, if you are in an organization and you uh, have an impact on multiple people uh, with you, that if you try to see beyond the jitterni jitteriness of the, uh, the current economy, uh, that it puts you in an advantageous position. Uh, most people, when they react to a, a volatile economy, want to just hang on and hold tight. Right. Uh, yet if you recognize that most people will be doing that, whether you're an individual or a company, you will be able to start making plans for the future, for when it stops being jittery, when it stops being volatile. And at that time, if you're prepared, and as an individual you've done training, or as a corporation you've done some training, you'll be better prepared to take advantage early when the market starts recovering. You know, I, I, you bring up a really good point, and it's one I, I kind of want to get back to because, the, <coughs> you know, we tend to start in terms of, you know, preparing for your next career, but, but there really is a, a, you know, this issue of preparing for the career you have now in, a, in an era when your organization may not be prepared to help you. What is your level of responsibility to go get your skills sharpened? You know, I, I, I want to respond to that, and, and that goes along with something that you said early on in our discussion, which is that companies are cutting their budgets for training. Companies that are cutting their budgets for training are doing so at their own peril. I mean, it's a very risky thing to do right now to cut training because there are a lot of demographic things going on, but one of them is this, this uh, baby boomer retirement. And even if the, there are 10,000 baby boomers retiring every day, and that number is just going to continue to increase. The second piece of that is if they're not retiring, most baby boomers are not going to want to stay at the same level of the organization that they've been at for the last 5, 10, 15 years. They're going to want to work less. They're going to not, they don't want to work so hard. And after you've spent 25 or 30 years in the workplace, I think you kind of deserve that. What happens when those people retire or step out of the, the C-level jobs or the director-level positions? A corporation loses a tremendous amount of knowledge, tacit knowledge. I mean, the, knowledge, the kind of knowledge that you can't gain by simply, um, you know, learning a new computer program or something like that. Knowledge that is key to running your business. I think what's, what Sean's talking about in terms of uh, the change in the workplace is project management provides a discipline, the foundation, where you can handle change, whether it's an organizational change or in terms of the market and competitive advantage, or in an individual change. It gives us the foundation and the process and the disciplines of the way we do business because the bottom line, end of the day, it's about delivering results. Delivering results for your organization, for your team, for your project, for your customer. And project management is the foundation that makes all that happen. That's why it's such a critical skill that you need as an individual as well for your organization. Where do, where do you start when you know you need to get some project management training, some communication training, some management uh, of project management training? Where do you start to find that experience uh, in a, such a volatile market? Well, let me start out, Pete. Please. Um, the Project Management Institute, which PMI is our professional organization, and on their website now for credential holders and for organizations, they have built a, a framework, a career framework. And they've identified 107 different skills that you need in your toolkit mm -hmm. to be an effective project manager, program manager, or portfolio manager. That's where I would start. This is an organization that's developed best practices through five years of research on what skills need to be in your toolkit. Now, how you go out and develop that skill is your second question. However, where to start is make a list. Put together your project plan. Put together your professional development plan that says, I need to build skills in these areas. And one of the skills that you should be building is your corporate skills in terms of your own business knowledge about your company, as well as project skills, leadership skills, management skills, and number one, sales skills. You've got to be a great salesman in today's volatile world. Mm -hmm. That's a really interesting comment. I mean, it, it, what I think people forget, especially when talking about their own personal assessment, is going through the process of a skill audit. I think, Pete, one way you can start is, whether you're an individual or a corporation, is think in terms of what is the definition of training. And to me, training means that you have a plan, that you have uh, thought there is an end date or a time at which I want to have accomplished a certain task or a certain uh, uh, item of skill or an accomplishment within a company. 
Uh, if you take it from that position and then start looking at ways to achieve that, it could include uh, uh, getting information for free from certain agencies or from uh, sor sources on the web. It could include forming partnerships with other companies or other teams within your company. It could also come from ways to uh, move and reallocate resources within your own organization or personally. What about skill acquisition uh, through volunteer opportunities? Um, let me address that one, Pete, because <laughs> I do that a lot. I'm all for it, To too. the point that um, people wonder if I'm working for the volunteer organization or do I actually work for Cadence. Uh, I have found just to grow my own skills, I volunteer a lot for the Project Management Institute. Um, I started out as a VP of certification because I wanted to get certified, and what better way to do that than to volunteer to lead the certification program, and therefore I got to take the certification classes, guess what, for free. Yep. And therefore, I decided after I did that for three years, I wanted to learn leadership skills. So I volunteered and got elected to president-elect, president-past past president of our chapter. Okay, did that, so I learned a lot about being a business leader, because in essence, you're running a little company. After that, I said, okay, I need to grow another skill. So I became the virtual team leader as a regional component mentor, working with 15 chapters and 10,000 members. And now I'm on the leadership advisory board, so now I'm helping direct the program and leadership. So. Volunteering, I think, is a super, super way of getting uh, training at little dollars except for your time. I, I agree with that. I'm on the board uh, for the Cascadia chapter of the American Society of Training and Development, and I'm the VP of Finance which a lot of people will laugh at if they know my <laughs> financial <laughs> abilities. <laughs> but one of the reasons I, I joined the board in that capacity is because I needed to hone that skill of reading, spreadsheet, reading spreadsheets, doing budgets, all of those kinds of financial skills. And when I go to look for volunteers to be a part of that committee specifically, I tell them, you can actually use skills gain skills that you can use on your resume that you probably won't gain in other parts of your uh, work experience. Uh, most training and development people do not learn how to read spreadsheets. That's not part of, sure. of their job. But they can learn how to read them and, and develop them through volunteering on the boards that, or on the finance committees that I sit on. Yeah, you know, being a project manager is like being a mini CEO. You've got to have financial skills Absolutely. so that you can run a budget on your project. Yep. You've got to have marketing skills. You've got to have good people skills. You have to have strategic skills. And so you become a mini CEO as a project manager and growing those skills is part of the 107 in the career framework. What a wonderful, uh, I, I really love the idea of that, that skill assessment through that the PMI career framework. Uh, it, what is the website for that kind of do you it's, know off the top of your head? Yeah, www.pmi.org, and it is available mm -hmm. free to members and credential holders and organizations, so they can start mapping their own career pathing in the organization mm -hmm. to best practices, and it is free to your company. That is uh, that is a fantastic resource. Resource, make sure to visit that. Take a look at your own career. Uh, your own skill audit. Make sure you're doing a skill audit and look at these free resources that you can find uh, both on the web through volunteer opportunities and, and take advantage of those. Start filling in those holes. Thank you everybody for, for joining us. This has been a great discussion and we'll see you next week on Ask Cadence. Learn the skills you'll need to develop your personal skill audit and enroll in a Cadence Project Management Seminar near you. Learn more at cadencemc.com. To learn more about our guest, Dr. Sean Harry, visit him online at Career Management Solutions, www.orcms.com. Dr. Harry is a regular blogger and host of the Perfect Career Podcast, available in the iTunes Store. <laughs>